All right, so now that we've talked uh, about our act structure and we've seen that uh, when we we're using the FET activity, all right, we saw that the, the molecules, when, they're, when they uh, add together, right, as we add the atoms together, we see that really they always kind of repel each other, okay? Because whether we have a lone pair of electrons or if we have atoms that have electrons and bonds, right, those electrons, no matter what, are going to be pushing uh, away from the other electrons, okay? So this is uh, really based on valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, okay, or Vesper theory, right? And really what it's saying is that whenever we have the electrons, right, it's going to push the atoms uh, or it's going to push those other electrons as far away as possible to give it as much space as possible. This kind of intuitively makes sense, right? Because we have electrons that are pushing away from the other electrons. They both have a negative charge, so they repel, okay? And so what we end up is with a number of structures, right? We can have a linear structure like this, and we would say that this is AX2E0. We could have a trigonal planar structure where we have AX3E0. We could have a tetrahedral structure, right? And this one, we would have one atom that's kind of coming out of the plane, one atom that's kind of going back behind, and then these three that are all in the same plane, right? Each of these is indicating that right, all of the electrons are pushing and getting as much space as they can, okay? So this would be our AX4E0, okay? And so all of these, right, all of these structures, right, similar things happen if we have lone pairs of electrons rather than bonds, okay? Um, so in the lone pair electrons, they can push those electrons that are in bonds further away as well, okay? And it does this by kind of changing the orbitals, okay? Um, but overall, what ends up happening is we use, uh, we, we have, depending on the number of atoms attached and then the number of electrons attached, it tells us about the shape of the molecule. And that shape of the molecule is going to influence a lot of the reactivity um, that we would kind of eventually see, okay? So over on the next page here, we actually have a lot of our information summarized. Okay, um, so if we have an AX2E0 structure, right, two atoms bonded, zero lone pairs of electrons, we're going to have a linear shape, right? This would be like our beryllium difluoride. If we have a bent structure, we, would ha we could have AX2E1, uh, right? We could have AX3E0 and have a trigonal planar structure. If we have an AX4E0, uh, that would be tetrahedral. If we have an AX3E1, right, that's trigonal pyramidal. AX2E2, that's bent or angular, right? All we're doing is we are just uh, reading this uh, table. So I will give you a table like this, right? The big thing that you guys need to be able to do is identify the AXE structure, right? You have to be able to get your AX. So another piece, I'm going to move this away and I'm going to go over to our uh, note packet, right? Another piece uh, that kind of results from this is that we have uh, intermolecular forces that are going to be interacting between molecules, okay? So when we talked about a polar uh, molecule and a nonpolar molecule, right, that's going to influence the type of interactions that these molecules are going to be able to uh, see each other, right, what type, type of interactions they're going to have with other molecules, okay? So the big important piece with this, right, we're going to call these intermolecular forces or IMFs, the big important piece is that IMFs only occur between molecules, okay? It is between molecules, we have to have multiple molecules. It is not within a mo molecule, right? Inter means outside of it, intra would be within the molecule, okay? So when we talk about our intermolecular forces, right, we are only talking when we have multiple molecules together, okay? So. Within, with our intermolecular forces, one second. 
with our intermolecular forces, right, it is, we are only going to be talking about our covalent molecules, okay? There are intermolecular forces with ionic compounds, but we're not going to talk about those right now, okay? So these are coulombic or electrostatic. I like coulombic because it's the coulombic force. Um, coulombic forces that act between molecules that hold the molecules together. So it holds the molecules together, okay? And really, we're, we, we oftentimes say that they only exist in solid, whoops, solid and liquid states. This is basically because, right, they, they, the molecules, when they're a gas, they're really far apart. We'll talk more about that later this year, okay? And they're generally relatively weak forces, okay? Chemical bonds are way stronger, way, way, way stronger, okay? So our much stronger chemical bonds are way harder to break, okay? The weak forces, IMFs, they can kind of add together, okay? Um, and they can, they, they really run the world, okay? I like to say, you know, sorry, Beyonce, uh, girls don't run the world, IMFs do, okay? So if we have our intermolecular forces, right, they are not, they are not bonds, right? They are not bonds. Instead, they are just interactions between the particles, okay? So if we look at our, our drawing here, right, we've looked at HCl before, and we said, really, there's more electron density over on this chlorine, right? So we have a more positive end on the hydrogen side and a more negative end over on the chlorine side. And so this negative end of one molecule can interact with the positive end of another molecule, right? We interact the negative with the positive, similar to how our ionic compounds interact, right? Our ionic compounds really have this full positive, full negative, and they line up, right? But with our uh, mo molecules, right, our intermolecular forces will kind of force our molecules to line up as well, okay? And they kind of hold the molecules together. Okay, so let's learn the types of our uh, forces, right, our intermolecular forces here. London dispersion forces, right, these are generally weak forces, and it's due to the movement of electrons, okay? So they're generally weak, they are due to the movement of electrons. Okay, so really move movement, I, I, movement there, sorry. Uh, the random movement of electrons, right? We don't really know where the electrons are, and so sometimes they just kind of move to one side, and then that's going to cause an interaction with another molecule because the other molecule is around as well. Okay, so this happens for all all molecules, okay? So no matter what, no matter what, all molecules will have London dispersion forces, okay? Because, right, the electrons, we don't always know where they are. They, do, they can move randomly, okay? Our dipole-dipole forces, okay, this is for only polar molecules, okay? So only polar molecules, right? And this would be like what we just drew, right? HCl, we know that has a more negative end over on this side. Chlorine's kind of pulling the electrons over more towards it. It has unequal sharing of electrons. So we're going to have a positive end over on hydrogen, a negative end with chlorine. And so we're going to end up, right, with this interaction between the positive end of one molecule and a negative end of another molecule, right? So the positive end, hydrogen over here, can interact with the negative end of the, the other molecule, okay? So that's one thing that ends up happening with our polar molecules, okay? The last piece, right, we have hydrogen bonds, okay? 
hydrogen bonds are really a subset of dipole-dipole forces. They're just a really strong type of dipole-dipole force, okay? So we would say that IMFs are generally going to be the weakest. Dipole-dipole, we're going to say medium, okay? But hydrogen bonds are going to be the strongest. Now, they are the strongest, but they are not as strong as our covalent bonds, right? Our covalent and ionic bonds are much stronger generally, okay? So our hydrogen bonds, they only happen when hydrogen has phon, okay? So when hydrogen has phon, then it can make a hydrogen bond, right? If hydrogen is attached, to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, and interacting with, interacting with fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, right? Fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen are really electronegative, right? They really pull on those electrons. And so the result is that we just have a really strong dipole, right? And so we have a kind of really strong negative end and a kind of weak positive end. So we have this even bigger charge separation. And so it's really kind of getting closer to an ionic bond, okay? So an example with this, right, if I draw H2O, we would see, right, hydrogen is attached to oxygen, so the electrons are really getting pulled over towards oxygen, and we've got these electrons that are on oxygen, so we're going to have an interaction with another H2O molecule, okay? And we see, oh, right, this one is kind of more positive, this one's really negative, right? So we have a hydrogen bond that is going to be really strong. It is not a bond, right? It is not a bond, even though we call it a hydrogen bond. It is an intermolecular force, okay? So that's all we got for now.